In this video, I'm going to share with you one of the lessons that is inside of my flagship improvisation program called Nail the Changes. Nail the Changes is an end-to-end -end system and solution for being able to improvise accurately and confidently over any chord changes, especially jazz harmony, what tones to target, how to work on scales, how to sound amazing and confident and use phrasing and time and feel and everything needed from the ground up with every exercise listed out as a beginning intermediate and advanced exercise. So I wanted to share this video with you because I think it's awesome and helpful just totally on its own. If you hear me say anything in the lesson where I'm referencing previous material or later things coming up, that's because it is from the context of the course. So you can just ignore that and otherwise it should be very useful just totally on its own. If you want to learn more about my course, Nail the Changes, you can click the link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com and click on courses and you will find it there. So this video is one of my favorite lessons in the course. This is one of the types of videos that I have peppered throughout some very kind of intense drills and hardcore material that gets the solutions that I think we a lot of us want with improvising, but I recently updated and added some fun kind of lighter videos for it. Hey, now that we did that big crazy drill, how do we just, what if we just wanna make music with it right now? What are we gonna do? So this is a video after talking about atonal free improvisation outside of scales, and after talking about outlining and mapping out and being able to improvise purely with chord tones, these kind of opposite things, how do we combine those together that I think allows us to sound really sophisticated and really um, advanced, but with this idea of nailing chord tones versus playing totally out. Really, really fun. One of my favorite things to do. So I wanted to share this video with you. Hope you find it helpful. Here's the video. Instantly sounding hip. Uh, well, that's what I think it kind of does. Anyway, we're revisiting our outside playing, our tonal free playing that we worked on before where we just worked on playing any note and this is just going to be a really quick simple video all i want you to do is just take a chord choose a single chord and loop it one that you feel comfortable improvising over with chord tones and then alternate between playing totally free and weird and connecting those free and weird ideas to landing on chord tones and playing a little bit with chord tones. So I'll just demonstrate here just on a C dominant seven chord. This is C dominant seven at tempo 140. And I might at first just, this has a gypsy jazz backing track feel. Kind of get my bearings, play with chord tones. Okay, and then this is this takes courage. Play the, all these notes that you would think are bad notes. And I actually recommend doing that like kind of for an extended period of time just to get yourself used to like, okay, this is okay. I'm not gonna die from it. Like <laughs> this is this is not uh, something I have to cringe at because it creates its own language over it. Now, that doesn't mean you want, need to like that sound, but we're going to do it now little bits at a time. You do a little bit of a phrase of the weirdness and the outness and then come back to a chord tone. You don't have to have this up your sleeve and use it if you don't like it, but um, it is very, it, if it kind of intrigues you, it's in incredibly powerful. I mean, it is, it's the kind of thing, and I maybe said this earlier in the course, where like you do a little something like this and someone's going to look and say, what, where did you learn that? And what kind of craziness is that? That sounds so advanced or that sounds like, you know, um, and just depends on if, if it's part of your language or not that you want to go into that out stuff. It's not required. Definitely. Most people don't do that. It's just something that I definitely like to do. And I hear certain players use it quite a bit um, and find it uh, very appealing myself. So here's that C7, which is funny. This feel is such a straightforward feel. Play it out and back in. We do shorter ones. and you know some some is maybe cool some maybe isn't that's part of the fun of improvisation but 
a couple of the things I was like, oh yeah, that was that was a fantastic ride there to just try something, play it, play notes that I know are random and out. I'm not trying to avoid chord tones at that point. I'm just playing, trying to let my hands do whatever. And then knowing where the chord tones are so well, I just, when I'm ready to, when I want to, I land on the nearest by chord tone with, and from having mapped it out earlier with that continuous chord tone thing, anywhere we are, we should know where is the nearest chord tone. Our hands can be ready for that. So that's all the exercise is. That's just some, an idea I want to plant in your head and just have you um, experiment with um, and and enjoy. And uh, if, if you just like that little taste of it, I have a feeling it'll come into your playing more. Um, one dangerous aspect of this is that we can use it as a crutch when we don't know what the right notes to play are. And that's actually a great survival mode strategy. You know, if some turnaround goes by really fast, go to the random notes and then make sure you just very quickly can get back to the tonality you're comfortable with. That's safe to do. You can pull it off as long as you know if you can get back to within a measure or two the chord tone notes and the good notes and, you know, where you want to play tonally. Uh, however, it can lead us to going a long time without mapping some things out because we can always get by with the random notes. So just something to watch out for. That's that that happened to me. And then when I finally mapped out some of that stuff that I was relying on the randomness to get over, uh, it was incredibly gratifying and more powerful that way. So, uh, okay, that's it for this video. Just a little bit on that exercise. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you found that helpful. Maybe you will take that exercise and start playing with it. If you want to learn more about my course, Nail the Changes, just click the link in the top of the description, or you can go to my website, soundguitarlessons.com, and click on Courses, and you will find it there. If you want to see more videos from the course, I've posted a few of them publicly now, and I've put the, them together into a playlist. So there's a link in the description as well, where you can go to that playlist and check out more lessons from my course, Nail the Changes. Hope you find those helpful or inspiring. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.